right, uh, Shiva, thanks for joining, joining me here. Uh, first, would you inter introduce yourself? Uh, talk to me, uh, tell me real quickly why you're primed to talk about experimentation program management and ask a few questions here. Yeah, I mean, I love CRO and everything about CRO. Uh, I do conversion optimization for Gardner Digital Markets, which is a culmination of uh, three brands, GetApp, Captera, Software Advice. So basically run the programs, the CRO programs for uh, the performance marketing team over there. So love talking CRO, love, love everything about it. It's a super fascinating field. Cool. Well, my, my first question uh, is what are some specific tools that you've used to affect experimentation mindset and the program around you? The context here, before I, I let you answer there, the context here is that I've been geeking out on sort of experimentation program management and agile frameworks and things like that. Um, you know, there's some cool stories about agile frameworks, specifically uh, success stories with Microsoft and that agile mindset coming from the bottom up, success story at Amazon, the, the, that agile growth mindset coming from the top down, right? So from a different approach. And then also like there's, there's stories of it failing, uh, like uh, GE, you know, the, this kind of mindset of growth optimization and, and that, you know, test measure learn type of loops and stuff kind of failing. So in these pro, in program management, um, in program management, uh, Again, what tools have you used to not only like start, but but really scale and like flex out and get success with program managers? So that's my circling back to the question. What are the specific tools that you use to affect that experimentation mindset of the of your coworkers and your colleagues going managing up and managing across? Yeah, I mean, I've used a number of tools. Um, the one that I'm currently using is Airtable. Um, I think it's great, but um, there's a number of tools that do what Airtable does well. One of the main reasons why I use Airtable is more conceptually, I think a testing tool needs to have good visibility and the ability to basically create custom views. Like, like you think about dashboards for like an analytics team, you like to create custom dashboards for unique stakeholders. And in the same way, you should have a tool that will enable you to create unique views based on what they are particularly interested in. And if you make it easily accessible for them to use it and look and say, okay, look, at these are the tests are running. Oh, look, here's a screenshot of what it is. Oh, by the way, these tests were in a couple of weeks ago and these are the results. Like having a tool that consult that may not necessarily do everything, but will consolidate everything into a single source of basically its own CRO dashboard. That works incredibly well. And I think the concept is increase visibility into your program, right? CRO is just not a black box that should just live in, you know, its own channel or in its own function that you and only you or you the people you work with know about it. Um, everyone within the org has access to it. If anyone wants a particular view to look at a specific, only specific fields like hypothesis, screenshots and test results, I can create a view for them pretty easily. Um, so I think the general theme for me is just enabling collaboration um, and enabling a lot of users to just go in and poke around and see what you're doing and how you're doing it so they're aware. And that visibility really helps, at least for me personally, get more and more people excited to use and like contribute um, to the CRO program. Yeah, yeah, Airtable is one of my favorite to, to accomplish that goal that you talk about the visibility and um, there's actually a new tool that I'll, I'll send you a link later and I'll post it uh, associated with this called stack.app um, mm -hmm. that allows sort of a front end interface of, of a, uh, of, you know, a visualized database like Airtable. Uh, so imagine like having a CRO, like, you know, your own website that people can kind of come into and it's got the dashboards displayed there in a more user friendly way. So I'm, I'm just now geeking out with that. Anyway. Okay. Question two. Uh, uh, it's a process question, right? Uh, and it has, well, it has to do with ba the balance between learning versus optimization. So I, I, I the context here um, is, I found a quote from you that says, you know, it's better to test to learn and not test to win uh, from a podcast you did back in January. And sure. I've been going back and forth with a, a few in the industry on this concept on it sounds good to, 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 
you know, test to optimize and test to learn at the same time. But in practice, it just doesn't happen often. A lot of times marketers focus on these metrics, you know, very in, in a very blind way. And, and they're just focusing on the short term gains, short term revenue metrics, as opposed to longer term customer metrics. Yeah, totally. Um, so in this world where we're starting to have technology to do like auto segmentation, auto personalization, effectively auto um, allocation, uh, it, it might be easier and easier to get lost for, to get away from the learning, right. And go towards more of these, these metrics. So where do you see the, the value in balancing the learning versus optimization? If, if we want to create that artificial division. Yeah. I mean, if you can brought an interesting point, right. It's like, if you hyper-focus on conversion rates, um, then you're missing the bigger picture of the experience and the experiential value. Um, one of the things that we've been focusing on a bit is taking a step back and saying a lot of the things that we've done, at least, you know, for the past couple of years has been, let's get the conversion and let's move on. But that's not, that's obviously pretty terrible for lifetime value. That's pretty terrible for just creating a good experience. And that's where I think you have to create a good experience and the conversions will follow in the same way. If you test to learn, the wins will follow. So I don't, it's not a hardened rule that you must always like run learning tests all the time. If there are certain tests that you think will have a strong chance to win based on other data, and you may not necessarily learn, um, you may not necessarily learn the things you want to learn, but if it wins, then you can disseminate learnings from that later. So it's, for me, it's, I think it's, a lot of CROers have a tendency to get in the weeds and say, I think this is going to win. This is going to win. This is going to win based on data. But instead it's take, take that into bite-sized chunks and identify ways to learn along the way. Because if you take three learnings and combine them into one, your chances of winning will be far greater, especially when you're using your testing tool to learn more about your audience. Then, you know, the data suggests that balance rate is really high. We should test this. Like that's not inherently in a wrong way to do it. But if you look and say, I think bounce rate's high, um, what we should do is add a buyer's guide to reduce that bounce rate. And if you see that it got very low engagement on a buyer's guide, well, then you know, you learned, okay, well, maybe this iteration of the buyer's guide is not great. You learned. And that'll help you tackle that ultimate problem that you're trying to solve for. Yep. Yeah, nice. Cool. All right, so you have a question three, and this is more of the classical customer research, uh, customer interview type question for you as, as an experimentation program manager. Uh, so what are you your two biggest obstacles, issues, pains, questions that you have right now with regards to your program management? Um, let me, again, back a little bit of um, context here. Thinking about this, your day-to-day, -day, you're, 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 you're constantly on this loop, the cycle of, of, of test measure learn. And so thinking about your, your day to day, your week to week, what are the things that you wish you could automate? What are the things that you are complaining about that you're wishing were solved? Uh, give me your top two. Yeah, I think one of them is going to be a challenge to ever automate, which is just running a test and an experimentation. you like, you're not always going to win. And in fact, when you test to learn, there will be times that you lose, but you always lose at a cost that you learn something to one, feed to other teams, especially if you have strong hypotheses with strong learnings you get from the experiment. It's not, it's a test loser, maybe technically, because it drops conversion rate, but it's a learning that you paid for. So sometimes businesses don't, especially, you know, given this pandemic thing that we're in, um, businesses may not have the opportunity to run experiments with the impact to revenue. Like you might want, you might have a brand new landing page design that you want to test and you know, it's a sound hypothesis and everything, but you're not able to run it because the disruption to revenue may be too great. So you may not have the opportunity to run it immediately. So that's not something that maybe you'd ever be able to truly automate. Um, but the other thing too, is just having dev resources, which, you know, it's, it's a problem that I've had for a bit, which everyone's fighting for dev resources. Everyone's fighting to have someone help them build experiments, take it to the next level, iterate and continue to push forward. You know, I'm pretty technically sound in terms of my dev skill, but you know, I don't do half the stuff that um, some of the devs are able to do, especially with these testing tools. 
Uh, one of the nice things is we actually just hired a Xero developer for our team, so I'm super excited. I mean, that's just going to take my program to the next level, but um, I think that's something that we struggled with, and especially with experimentation and especially with test to learn a lot of times the learnings are valuable, but um, you know, it's, it's always a struggle given there's always other business priorities and you're, you're another, you know, fish in the pond that needs the resources. So it can always be difficult to get the resources you need from the development team to, to help push that program to the next level. And that's true with almost every org I've worked for. Um, and it's not even unique to Sierra. Everyone has that challenge. Yeah. 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 It's resourcing effectively. And, um, we're seeing that challenge in, in a lot of ways of, of having a successful machine within, you know, one function, be it marketing or, or, or whatever. But as we want to sort of expand and not ourselves, but just as an organization, again, that experimentation mindset and that process and the guardrails around the, you know, hypothesis testing effectively, um, the, the personnel and the training and, and, and having the resources available when you need them for things to run smoothly is, is always a bit of a crux. Um, well, cool. Yeah. Well, thanks Shiva. Those are the three questions. I appreciate it. I know we could talk on, I've got a thousand questions I could get your opinion on, I'm sure. Uh, and so I'm hundred percent sure you, I'll, I'll get you back on here for another little um, uh, quick round of these three questions, but I appreciate it. 